Starlink Premium has more than double the antenna capability of our regular Starlink service, which translates to faster internet speeds and higher throughput. It's designed for super users, whether they be individuals or businesses, to help ensure bandwidth for critical ops even during times of peak network usage. Deliveries start in Q2 of this year, so if you're interested in reserving a spot, you can order now by heading over to Starlink.com. So we are just under five minutes Pressing from liftoff. Back, Falcon 9 is progressing into the final stages of launch countdown. Next up, the truss structure next to the vehicle, known as the transporter rector, will start to retract. In preparation for the retraction, the TE clamp arms will open, and then the strong back will begin to pull away from the rocket slightly, and then at T0, hydraulics pull the TE even further away as Falcon 9 lifts off. The TE is next to uh, the Falcon 9. It provides liquids, gases, and electrical connections to the second stage, as well as air conditioning to the payload. So you can see there are some clamp arms just underneath the fairing. We are expecting those to begin to open up uh, here in just a few seconds. And after those um, start to open up, that structure next to Falcon 9 will begin to um, back, uh, back away from it. And, and you can see that right now that the clamp arms are indeed opening up. Both the first and second stages should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each other. The first stage should finish up uh, loading its propellant around the T minus three minute mark and the second stage around the T minus two minute mark. At 60 seconds, uh, Falcon 9 will be in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown and just inside of T minus two seconds, we light the Merlin 1D engines and then we are set for liftoff. On screen right now is the view of the fairing, and then the strong back right next to it, you can see, has begun to retract away uh, to its pre-launch position. Stage one, lock load is complete. There was the call up for stage one, lock load complete. In about a minute, we should hear the call up for stage two, lock load complete. The Starlink payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. So just over two and a half minutes until liftoff. If you're just joining us, this is the sixth, the sixth mission for us this year and the third Starlink mission for us this year. So on screen is a view of Falcon 9. That booster is flying for its sixth time today. It's currently stationed at Launch Complex 39A. Stage two, lock load is complete. And with that call out, we have wrapped up propellant loading, not just on the second stage, but for the vehicle overall. Uh, you can start to see some white clouds building up around Falcon 9. This is normal and expected for us at this stage in the countdown. That is that super chilled liquid oxygen that we talked about earlier. When it yeah, closed out, so reaches started. the warmer ambient air temperatures of Florida, those clouds start to form. At this, nine isn't started. at this point, both stages are beginning to pressurize for liftoff, and we are expecting the launch director to give the final go for launch here in just a few seconds. Launch director, go for launch. And with that call out, all systems are go for launch. Let's listen in to terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 49 Starlink satellites into orbit. T minus 30 seconds. T 
minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off, Starlink 4 7. Pitching down range. M1D chamber pressures are nominal. We are T plus 40 seconds into liftoff. Falcon 9 has successfully cleared pad 39A and carrying Power our stack of elbow. 49 Starlink satellites into orbit. Moments ago, we began to throttle down the engines on the first stage in preparation for max Q. This is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic stresses during ascent. There was Max Q. We are getting some great views of this daytime liftoff. In about a minute, we have three events happening in quick succession. First up is main engine cutoff, also known as Nico, followed by stage separation, and then second engine start one, also known as SES-1. During main engine cutoff, uh, this is where all nine Merlin engines on the first stage will shut down in order to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. And back engine chill has started. During stage separation, the first and second stages will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to our drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean for its landing attempt. And the second stage will continue with the third event, which is second engine start one. This is where the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite and continue to propel the second stage along with the 49 Starlink satellites into orbit. Those three events should be happening uh, here in about 20 seconds. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. Bearing separation confirmed. So we've had successful main engine cutoff, successful stage separation, successful second engine start on the um, second stage, and then also fairing deploy. On screen right now, you can see the first stage boost there at the bottom of your screen um, making its way back along with the two fairing halves. They've deployed, They're, they were at the top of the screen, but they'll make their way back towards Earth and be recovered by our recovery vessel. Doug. As a reminder, those fairing halves, uh, one flown, one was flying for the fourth time, and the other was flying for its sixth time. So a couple of views on screen right now, on the right-hand side of your screen, is a view of our single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Those Starlink satellites that we have been talking about, all webcast, those are located on the opposite end of that engine. On the left-hand side of your screen is a view from the top of our first stage looking down. Um, its job right now is to head back towards uh, the drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, and make its sixth landing attempt. In order to make its way back, the first stage has two burns today. Both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. The first is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin engines will reignite. And this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn. This is a single engine burn that will bring the, speed, the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. The first burn is expected to start around the T plus six minute and 47 second mark. And the second burn is going to be starting at the T plus eight minute and signal. 26 second.
So we are still a few minutes away from the next milestone. The Starlink satellites that we're going to be delivering today, we're going to be delivering them to low Earth orbit, and they will be operating at about 550 kilometers. Uh, most satellites are at 36,000 kilometers in altitude in geostationary orbit. And when satellites are farther from Earth, the round trip data time between the user and satellite, known as latency, is much higher, resulting in poor performance for activities such as video calls and online gaming. Starlink satellites operate at, at over 60 times closer to the Earth than traditional satellites, resulting in much lower latency. It's continuing to go well for both stages. On the left-hand side of the screen, we see some action. Uh, those puffs of gas, that is nitrogen from our attitude control system. That in conjunction with the grid fins that you see on, on screen, uh, those help to steer and orient the first stage as it makes its way back to its targeted landing zone. So we are about 20 seconds away from the first of two burns on the first stage. Three engines on the Merlin, three Merlin engines on the first stage will reignite and help to slow down that stage before it hits the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one energy burn startup. And there are those three engines that have reignited. This burn is expected to last for about 20 seconds. Stage one energy burn shut down. Awesome. That is one of two burns successfully completed. Stage two FTS is saved. In about a minute, we have a couple events happening in rapid succession. So we'll have the landing burn start on the first stage. And then as Both that is ending, and as our first stage is going to be uh, attempting its sixth landing on our drone ship, we are expecting second engine cutoff on the engine that you see on the right-hand side of your screen, followed by uh, the call-out for successful um, orbital insertion. And as a reminder, because we won't have ground station coverage during the time that the Starlink satellites separate uh, today, we will be ending our webcast stage after we confirm orbit of the second stage, and then we'll confirm deployment on our social media platforms. Just under 10 seconds away from the landing burn of the first stage. For now, we are enjoying some stage two is great guidance. views of the second stage, stage Merlin vacuum engine. So you can see that the drone ship is getting closer. And up on the right-hand side of the screen is that drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Stage one, leg deploy. Does look like the video cut out for a little bit. And hearing some cheers here in Hawthorne. And there's visual confirmation that the first stage has landed for the sixth time. And this marks our 106th overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket. Uh, that includes both Falcon 9 and heavy first stage landings. Good orbit insertion. Uh, so during that time, we also got a successful second engine cutoff of the second stage, and you just heard the call out for good orbital insertion. And as previously mentioned, although payload deploy is scheduled to occur around the T plus 15 minute mark, we won't have ground station coverage to confirm successful deployment until about T plus one hour and 20 minutes. For those of you that are interested, we'll keep the audio only countdown nets up on our YouTube channel, and then we'll confirm successful payload deployment on our social channels. 
But that is going to be bringing our webcast to a close today. Thank you to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers and all of our Starlink customers using our service at this time. Thanks for joining us for our third and final launch of this week, and we will see you again soon.